people with long careers behind them. You don't like to think that uh, most of the important problems haven't been addressed yet. So we, we hope that the picture of cosmology that we have now is something where understanding is, 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 is saturating. So we do have one fundamental issue here, which is dark energy, for example, which is said to have been one of the biggest in it, you know, issues in cosmology, biggest puzzles, biggest problems in, in the whole of physics even. Um, you know, it could just be a constant that was just settled down by, settled in to some theory that we don't have access to at the moment, and um, fine, it's a yeah. constant. There it is. That fits all of the data, for example. Yes, I, um, I know, but it's... Wh wh why, I don't really understand why so much effort is being put into understanding the origin of this, of this number, <clears throat> frankly. Aye. Well, th well, this... I'm sure that that argument of resignation is right in, in some cases. I mean, you gave an example about the, the rough equality between barrier and, and dark matter density. But, you know, coincidences happen. Um, and the density of each of those constituents could scan many, many powers of 10. But if each power of 10 is equally probable, then the chances of them ending up within about a factor of 10 of each other isn't, isn't so bad. And I think you're happy with that because you don't have a feeling of, of, of where, where, if there's no natural point that, that, that any of those densities should end up. But with, but with lambda, we, we do because we can try and calculate on, on the back of an envelope quantum mechanical contributions to the energy density. So we know to order of magnitude what those should be. So the fact that the observed value is so much smaller can only be a Counted for where there's a kind of cancellation, a number of, of different constituents have, have, have happened to null each other to, to very far down mm -hmm. their decimal places. Now, they're independent contributions. You can't see why that should be. And eventually, when the nulling is, is too many powers of 10, to me, the coincidence argument just doesn't work anymore. It's, um, and and you know, that, that's why I. I still inclined towards some kind of ensemble approach because it, it's it's a bit like it's, you know it's, it's like winning the national mm. lottery agreed I, I, I mean to, okay there's going to be a winner but it only makes sense for somebody to win the lottery if there's an awful lot of losers out there you can't expect that okay tomorrow nobody's allowed to play the national lottery except mm. joe silk and joe will go out and buy one ticket and happens to guess the winning numbers no, 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 I'm, I'm not going to accept no. an explanation of the universe no. that works at that sort of level. Understood, but here's the big difference, okay? For the lottery, national lottery, the rules have been set. There's no question about the rules. No one is going to fake it so that you or I win. I mean, there are rules out there, one will calculate the odds. For the cosmic constant, it's totally different. We don't know what the rules are. There is no theory of quantum gravity that we can even remotely understand. There is string theory, but which, which sets there's in quant there's some quantum field level. theory, which, which works very well. And That's is, fine, is but it doesn't unify Einstein's gravity and the quantum theory at the beginning of the universe, where one has set up the, this cancellation, if you like, mm -hmm. between these contributions to the vacuum energy the lead to the current small value of the cosmic constant. We do not have a theory for that. And so given that lack of a theory, I, I find it surprising that um, so many take so seriously uh, this challenge uh, as a serious problem to, 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 you know, to be a, putting so much effort into. It could just be we should be patient and wait for the right theory to emerge. Okay, because right. I thought you were saying something different. I thought you were almost saying, let's abandon trying to calculate it. it you know, there it is. It's just, it's just a number. We're never going to learn any more no. than that one number. Live with that. No, I'd, I'd say wait for the next Einstein. We'll unify uh, quantum gravity and gravitation. I'm sure that will happen eventually. Yes. Um, yeah, I, th I think I'm happier with that argument with inflation, because inflation, we really don't know that anything like inflation actually happened. Mm. And so the, the problems that you try to solve there for, for breaking classical causality in the early universe, kind of a smack of quantum gravity a bit. Mm -hmm. But the problem we have with, with, with lambda is that there are contributions that we know should be there that aren't to do with quantum gravity. 
And so quantum gravity can only kind of add additional effects to them. Now, if as far as we knew the, the value was zero, then I, I think you might be able to accept, okay, there's some symmetry, let's say, waiting to be discovered that guarantees that in the end they, they, all, they all cancel out. And you know, there, there used to be plenty of papers written. I remember there was a very influential one by Sidney Coleman in about 1980, kind of proving that lambda should be zero. So if we hadn't observed it to be non-zero, we'd probably be happy that eventually this will all be sorted out. But it's the non-zero small value that is a puzzle, isn't it? It's certainly um, a very strange cancellation. But again, I, I, I again would appeal to the ultimate theory, which we don't have yet, as potentially being capable of, um, you know, explaining this this. Uh, a small number. Hmm. Okay, but but we're only talking about half of the, the dark matter, the dark energy problem, which is not just the, the kind of level of the, the vacuum energy, but the fact that it's just becoming important yes. in the cosmological dynamics right. today. Right. And it's putting those it's putting those two questions on the table, and realizing that a, an ensemble approach might solve both simultaneously. That well, for look, me, made an attractive package. Yes. Look, the multiverse is certainly one solution, but I can think of um, at least two other approaches that have been taken in recent times to addressing this um, with more standard physics. So one of them is, is probably wrong, but qualitatively it, it's attractive, and that is um, that we live in a very biased place in the universe. Um, and essentially, if um, you live in a gigantic hole, not a totally empty hole, but a partially empty hole, a void, which um, stretches out for billions of parsecs, then in principle, um, as you traverse that void, void, you will first of all see uh, um, an under-expansion, yeah. you know, and then it'll, it'll look like acceleration, sure. basically. But now, that, that's a model that probably has weird effects that have caused it to be ruled out. But in principle, okay, it's a, think of it as a toy model. No, no. But that, that could be an example of why Lambda might, you know... Yeah, but that's not, that's not an explanation. I mean, that's what I'd put under the heading of denial. And you know, there are Lambda deniers out there who, who are happy to, no, to look I, at every individual no. data set and... And no, say something's wrong with no, the observations. No, I, I'm not saying it's real. I'm so, giving you that as a toy model. Yeah, no, okay, uh, okay. agreed. So, but so that's all. If there was some way in which you could say, actually, you know, we don't need a physical non-zero vacuum density to explain the data. Yes. You know, I, there would be grounds for being happy about that. Yes. But so I have one toy model. But I think that no, toy no, is no, so extreme it right. doesn't convince me this ever like No, no, no. It, it's just meant to be an example that such things could exist. This one almost certainly doesn't exist, but it could exist. Okay. Uh, here's another example of one also that could exist and probably doesn't, but it comes from a totally different heritage. And so it turns out if you um, go more deeply into the multiverse, okay, um, you can classify uh, the possible multiverses in terms of different manifolds. And um, one, one estimate is that, is that there are not an infinite number, but 10 to 500 of these. Okay, mm -hmm. out there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it turns out that almost all of these are topologically complicated in some way. And you can arrange them. Again, this is in one particular representation, which I think may well be wrong. But it's, again, it's, think of it as a toy model. You can arrange them in terms of topological complexity. And so um, this involves something called the Hodge number. So it's something, you know, involving, you know, weird wrinkles in space. But anyway, if you then classify them and go down to the very lowest level, with the simplest possible topology, you suddenly can reduce your number of manifolds from this vast number that was the multiverse down to three, for example, mm -hmm. um, which more or less might correspond to the, you know, three different projections of the standard model of particle physics or something, whatever. What is it? It's a very small number. So it does say that there could be something very special 
order hidden inside the multiverse in principle. And this might be another way of, um, you know, it might be that these models which end up with the right model of yeah. particle physics today do happen to have the, the appropriately low value of... Uh, well, okay. Um, um, okay. I, I could argue about that, but, but I, I think you're still talking about the physics. And, and uh, let's come back to the, um, the observer aspect. Mm -hmm. yeah, because we're stuck with the, with the fact that this strange value of lambda is just becoming dynamically important in the expansion history of the universe when it's a few billion years old which is the, the, the time scale that's necessary to develop observers. And we're expected to, to say that's just a coincidence. And, you, and, you, and you, you, you're, you're happy with that? This is where we disagree. I'm saying it's all in the physics and that we don't understand the physics yet. So let's be patient and wait for some new theory to come along. You're saying, no, forget the physics, it's irrelevant. Um, we observe this anomaly, you know. Well, th think of the whole theory, for example, of um, astrology, right? There are these wonderful things out there in the sky, weird coincidences. You know, at some point, people took them very seriously. I mean, uh, even today, if I were writing an astrology common column in the newspaper, I'd be earning far more money than any as, you know, astronomer does. Mm -hmm. so, so it's something that, that is still taken seriously. But, you know, it, it's not physics. You, you don't take that seriously as explaining any of the coincidences that we see in the universe, I assume, nor do I. No, so I don't let's think, be a little I don't careful. Think, I don't about think the level of probabilities is, is, is quite the same. Right? So this is well, this, this, this is bringing us back to you know if, if the if the cosmological if there was a natural value for the cosmological constant set by Planck scale physics mm. and sort of thing you, you, you find in a, in a review, and we said oh well you know the lambda is is only one thousandth of that, you might shrug and say okay fine. The headline figure that, that you'll often see is 120 powers of 10. Now, you know, the, the constellations are, are not as, as, as kind of impressive and <laughs> the patterns on the sky as that. Whereas, you know, if I, if I saw a pile of stars that wrote <coughs> Professor Joseph Silk, you know, with, with um, 10 stars to each letter, I, I would say there was something going on. Yeah, so as astrology is just a question of how strongly... The, the evidence well, let, let me give you one. So, no, let, let me give we, you one more example. We, we, do, we do have we yeah. do have a problem, I think, sure. because, or at least, there's a question that's being you know the why now question, is sure. is a question that's about observers, and and then I see you can't make an answer to that without bringing in observers, and that's me, the whole anthropic approach. Let, let me give you another example. I mean, you cited ten to the, the odds, ten to the minus one hundred and twenty has been incredibly small odds. There's one other place in astrophysics that I know of where odds like this come in. Okay, and you can, you can probably guess what that is. I'm referring to astrobiology, the origins of life. So if you start calculating what the probabilities are for um, life to originate out of some, any, you take any complex interstellar mass you want to, some cloud anywhere, right? Um, you come up with numbers that are or probabilities that are comparably small, maybe even smaller, okay? Mm. And that problem has been addressed, but not solved, I should say, by going into the um, RNA and the DNA worlds and developing various ways of um, organizing complexity to develop. I don't think we're, we have the yes. answer yet, but it does show you a, hint a, of a, direction. a physical example of how you can go from unsurmountably small probabilities to a fact, an absurd fact, that we're here having this discussion. Yes, sir. right, and, and that answer is it's evolutionary, isn't it? You start off with relatively simple ingredients and, and make them become more elaborate with, with time. So you end up with, and in a sense, this, this is just Darwin and the, um, and, 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 and the watch all over again, you know, or the, the complexity of the human eye. You don't need to bring that about in one go. You start small and build your way up. So what's the analogue of that with, with lambda? I mean, that, that's what motivates many people thinking about dynamical dark, dark energy. So you start off with, with an energy density of the vacuum that takes this natural, extremely large value, and it just falls towards zero, and we're just, we're just kind of passing through at the moment. So in principle, that's, I see that as a, as a kind of analogy. You don't have to explain the small number in one go. You, know, you start high and work your way down. 
but you've still got to explain why we're passing through where we are just just at the moment. Um, think, that may be. You know, if it's, it's it's it's. I mean, people tried to to make you know the the, the suc near success. I think was the whole idea of, of tracking. The you know, the idea that the the dynamics of the um, the dark energy could be sensitive to whether the universe was dominated by radiation, as it is at early times, or matter. And if something about the transition between matter dominating in total density over radiation could trigger the, the, the change with time of the cosmological constant to alter its trajectory and become more, more nearly flat, that would have worked because, but again, it's, it's observer selection, but you know, we're, we're happy within a single universe that there is observer selection. Right? Why is it a few billion years old now rather than 10 to the minus five seconds? Well, 10 to the minus five seconds, it was rather hot. You, know, you have to wait until the universe has cooled become matter dominated for structures to grow. So if you could tie the small value of lambda to that, 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 was, that was a potential success. But that, that argument didn't, didn't work out. Nobody could figure out how to change the dynamics naturally from rapid decline to, to flattening off. So I, I think we still have a puzzle. Yeah, I don't find that a convincing argument just because no one was able to do this whenever they looked at this decades ago to figure out how to track vacuum energy decay with the radiation field. Um, it seems to me that, you know, from the just the simplest possible point of view, that's, that's a fairly compelling connection. And I, I could imagine that someday someone might have a theory which would connect the two. And, and if one could do that, one would straight away win, win back many of your orders of magnitude. Uh, so but it's a, I think that's a physical example of something that might eventually be more fruitful when we understand mm. better the you know, the, yeah. the quantum gravity aspects of all of this. I suppose, well, but yeah, the only question is how long are you prepared to wait? Mm. Um, you know, when a community has been trying with increasing levels of activity for, for decades to try and produce an explanation of this kind and nobody's found one, you either say, oh, well, we, we just need you know, some super Einstein mm. who'll solve it all, all for us, or you say, well, look, actually, this this route just doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Yep, and that's, that's, that's how I feel it is at the moment. Right, but right. The literature is just full of all these papers that tried and, and failed. And after a while, you lose heart reading them, never mind writing them.